okay so um, the boil just ended as you can see um, I pretty much I got the the brew kettle off as soon as possible just took 10-15 seconds to hook it up to my faucet um, this water coming out the stream you see is really hot so be careful uh, it's gonna be it's not gonna be boiling but it's gonna burn you if you touch it so basically up here I've got my thermometer and I've got a spoon uh, so I'm kind of whirlpool the mixture while it's cooling down and I'm gonna basically I'm gonna keep a, a temperature reading going so I can tell when it's around that you know 80 degree 75 degree temperature um, and then uh, after that it's just a matter of getting it inside doing the transfer and uh, dumping the yeast in there so let's get started on that so what I'm gonna do is this is cooling off I've got my uh, thermometer here I've my hands are clean my spoon's been sanitized thermometer's been sanitized um, I'm gonna take this hops bag out and if you remember I said this thing fills up with water because those hops really expand I don't know if you can really see that but I mean that's a ton of liquid and stuff in there so um, basically I'm gonna let this drain off as much as I can if you're real careful you can uh, kind of pull an edge of this bag up and kind of work it around a little bit you don't really want to squeeze it um, but you want to get as much as that wart out of there as you can because uh, you really you don't want to waste any make sure you dispose of this properly you don't want any dogs getting into this it will kill them like I said before so there's still a little bit left in there I'm going to kind of set it on top of my wart chiller I'm going to start stirring this just a little bit just so it can cool off see just that little bit of stirring I did it dropped from 120 degrees down to 100 degrees in just a matter of you know 20 seconds so you can obviously see the benefits of using a wart chiller okay I just took a temperature reading um, you can probably see it stayed it's right around uh, 78 or so degrees which should be fine I can tell by looking at uh, how much liquid is in there that um, it's a little bit low I'm probably gonna add some top off water to it so 78 degrees should be fine uh, that tap water is gonna bring it down to about 70 or so depending on how much I have to add so um, basically we're gonna take this inside um, make sure our uh, siphon is good and sterilized and then we'll siphon it right into our sanitized fermenter so um, our boils done um, basically this what we've got right now is beer that just hasn't been fermented um, what I just did I took uh, my bucket my fermenter that I'm going to use um, it's been sitting in sanitizer for about an hour and a half um, I took it's emptied out you can see I don't know if you can really see there's still some foam left in there and um, that's from the star sand that's okay uh, the first few times it kind of scared me a little bit um, people had said uh, the foam won't bother the beer don't worry about it um, if you rinse the foam out you're basically defeating the sanitizer so I can tell you from experience the star sand will not affect the flavor of your beer uh, it won't harm the beer in any way and, and it's actually said that uh, the foam and whatever star sand is left will turn into yeast food so I emptied that bucket I've got uh, another small bucket it's a one gallon bucket that I actually used uh, for uh, another batch of homebrew that my malt extract came in um, I filled that up with uh, the some sanitizer left so I'd still have some so I've got uh, my auto siphon over here um, a bucket full of sanitizer I've got my wart here still in my uh, uh, keg here so basically the next step is to siphon the beer from the um, from the keg into the fermenter you might get some sanitizer on your arms too just anything just to be safe um, make sure everything's nice and clean and sanitized we should be good so take this this is an auto siphon you can use just a regular siphon hose the reason I use the auto siphon it does all the siphoning for you you basically just pump it a few times it starts to siphon and it goes the the entire time so these have a cap on the bottom um, I'm actually going to take the cap off for now because I don't really care if I suck up any of the proteins or um, any of that that are in there um, it should be fine now when I go into the secondary fermenter, I will take that uh, cap and put it back on a little bit so I don't, I'm more, what basically what I'm worried about here is it's spilling out on the ground. So anyway, that's, 
as you can see there, I hit it a couple times. It's siphoning out um, and it's going to the bucket. Now, um, when it's going in there, you might see some chunks of stuff going in there. Um, you might see some hops residue. That's okay, don't worry about it. It's gonna look gross. Um, I'll try to kind of show you here what it looks like as it's siphoning in. There is gonna be junk, but it's really not a problem because all that's gonna go down into the bottom anyway. So you can see it filling up. Um, you can really kind of see how dark it is compared to uh, what we started with, which is just plain water. Um, but that's gonna give it its color, its taste. And uh, once you do this, it's gonna smell real bittersweet. And that's because basically it's just a sugar solution and then it's got the hops, so it's gonna have that hops flavor. And let's see if we can get the inside of the keg here. That's what, uh, that's what the wort looks like coming in straight out of the, the keg there. Um, but this auto siphon is just a lifesaver. They're cheap, they're like 20 bucks. Um, I'm on my second one I've ever had and I've been doing this about two years, so by no means am I an expert, but um, these things last quite a while and they're, they really make it easy to siphon, so. Okay, so we're done siphoning, just uh, finished up here. So um, basically, I'm gonna take this, be real careful with this, because anything that leaks out is gonna be super sticky. Um, you don't have to worry about this being sanitized anymore, so you can just throw it in the sink. You'll want to pump water through it um, and clean it up. Always clean up your stuff after you're done or it's going to be a big hassle the next time you try to use it. It's going to be nasty. So that's done. I'm done with the uh, brew kettle. And I'll kind of show you here what's left. That auto siphon does a really good job of getting pretty much everything that's in that kettle out. So there's a little bit of treble left in there. There's just a tiny bit of wart. It's not really worth saving trying to get it out of there. So um, this is what we ended up with. Um, I am gonna have to top it off. It's a little uh, less than I thought. It's about three gallons. So I guess uh, with it being that cold outside, um, we had a lot more steam and evaporation than I thought there was gonna be. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, top that off. Um, and then it's almost time to pitch the yeast. All right, so we got it topped off. You can kind of see uh, the light through the bucket. Here's the five gallon mark. Just a tad over five gallon, that's okay. Um, once you top it off, um, you're gonna take a original gravity reading. Um, and another thing here too, um, if you can see here, this is a temperature strip. Basically this is gonna tell you the temperature of your wart. You need to get it in the, the ideal range. Um, I can see right now, um, it goes from 30, 36 degrees up to 78 degrees. Um, for an ale, you're gonna want 60 to 78 degrees, preferably around 70 degrees, 72 degrees for the um, ideal fermentation temperature. Um, this one's at 74, it's just about perfect in my opinion. Um, so since I added the top off water, I'm gonna go ahead, um, I've got my lid here uh, for my fermenter and I've taken my spray bottle, I filled up a spray bottle with sanitizer too um, and I've just, I'll spray it down, I'll spray it again one more time. Uh, really handy. So basically I'm gonna take this lid, shake off any extra sanitizer that's in there. Take my lid, put it on there. Um, and these aren't just regular five gallon buckets either. They're food grade five gallon buckets. Um, so don't just try to use a Home Depot bucket or anything. So I'm gonna kind of mix it up, make sure all that tap water I added to top it off is going to um, mix with a wart so I can get a, a, a pretty accurate reading whenever I get the uh, original gravity. What left to do is to take an original gravity, uh, original gravity reading um, and add the yeast. Um, you don't have to take a gravity reading. Um, really the only reason to do that is if you question your fermentation um, whether or not the beer is completely fermented out, which is really more important in uh, uh, bottling than it is kegging, which is what I do. Um, but basically what you do, you take your original gravity reading and it basically tells you how much sugar solution is mixed with the water. Um, once the beer is, you've added the yeast, it's fermented out uh, two to four weeks, whatever the recipe calls for, you can take a final gravity reading and uh, it'll be a much different number. And when that happens, 
you can take the difference between your original gravity reading, um, your final gravity reading, um, subtract those from each other, um, you'll get a fractional number. Um, then you'll take that and multiply it times 131, and that's going to give you your alcohol percentage. So, um, basically what you need to do this, uh, you need a tube, a sample tube, um, and then you need a hydrometer. It's a uh, graduated scale hydrometer. Um, it tells you what it is. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll tell you how much sugar or how much whatever. You can use this on several different kinds of uh, alcohol production, which, of course, with this we're doing beer, you can use this on pretty much anything. But um, basically, what a recipe called for was an original gravity of 1.062. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, there's several different ways you can pull samples. Uh, you can use a, uh, a wine thief, which is basically just uh, kind of like a hand-operated vacuum tube where you can dip it in, put your finger over the top, pull it out, and you'll have whatever volumes in the tube. Um, what I like using is a turkey baster. Um, basically, you know, just like a $2 turkey baster you get at Walmart. Make sure, uh, two things. First, um, draw sanitizer up in it squeeze it, pump it several times, make sure that sanitizer gets up in the bulb all through the tube on the outside because um, you don't want anything getting in your beer. Uh, second thing is make sure you clean it out when you're done because that unfermented beer will go up in that uh, that bulb and get really nasty. So basically I'm going to draw a sample out of here. I'm going to fill up this tube with this wart which you don't have to fill it up all the way, but uh, I fill it up a good bit of the way. That's about right, right there. So, I dropped it down in there, and we're gonna drop this down and see what it ends up at. Um, like I said, it said it was gonna be about 1062, um, and sometimes you gotta work around the foam. I don't know how good you can see. This is the scale right here we're gonna use. Basically, you drop this down in there, and then see where it floats to on the scale. You want it as level as possible. And it looks like we're at exactly 1.062, so that came out perfect um, for the amount of water we added and how much sugar we had. So, um, that's gonna be your original gravity. If you, uh, you could go ahead and calculate, it says the final gravity on this, is supposed to be at 1.014. So, I'll show you how to do this real quick. You can see my phone. Um, our original gravity is 1.062, and we're gonna take what our final gravity should be, which is 1.014, and that's gonna give us 0 0.048. So, we can take 0 0.048, multiply it times 131, that's going to give us our uh, approximate alcohol by volume if the yeast flocculates completely. So 6.2% beer should be a good beer. Um, and that is pretty much dead on with what Big Sky is. Now this beer left over in your test tube here, um, you can taste it if you want. It's not going to taste um, exactly like beer. It's going to taste bittersweet, which it does. Um, it does taste good. But whatever you do, do not uh, return that back to your beer. Um, because that's, everything is uh, uh, unsanitized in that and you don't want to introduce anything into your beer. Two steps left, remember back up. So we're going to put the lid on there and then you're going to want to shake the crap out of it. Basically what you want to do, you want to aerate your wort as much as possible. Get as much air in there as you can, um, which is going to help the yeast. Um, so make sure, just seal it up and shake it as hard as you can. I don't know, five minutes, just as long as you possibly can to get as much in there as you can. Then the last step is adding the yeast. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, seal this back up, shake it up, and then we'll add our yeast.